Okay, um, starting with our game um, up at Syracuse, I was very proud of the way our guys hung in there uh, and battled back and, and the adjustments that were made by the staff. Uh, as I've said many times this year, we've found different ways to win games and that was our fifth uh, game that we've come from behind uh, and won. I think that says a lot about the grit and the resolve and the uh, connection that these guys have with each other and the way the staff can work together and just overcome difficult moments in games. It's a special group. Um, in the game, we had to overcome a lot that we did to ourselves in the first half. You know, obviously we spotted them the way I look at it, 16 points. We fumbled going into score, uh, which should have been seven for us. Uh, had a safety in the end zone. Uh, which makes it nine and gave up a kickoff return, which makes it 16. And uh, we haven't had a return cross our 35 yard line this year. So to give one up for a touchdown uh, was inexcusable and very disappointing. So I had to come back from a lot, you know, and, and did. And at halftime, guys regrouped and, and came out motivated. Um, second half, we were a much different football team, 22 to seven, and had a fourth quarter shutout. Very proud of how Bailey responded. Uh, obviously, some plays uh, went the wrong way for him in the first half, and, and he overcame that mentally and just came out and played really well uh, in the second half. Uh, threw the ball well, made good decisions, took care of the football in the second half. I thought our O-line uh, struggled in pass protection in the first half and then responded and gave him time to throw and, and did a nice job adjusting to the different games and twists that they were doing blitzes. I thought our receivers were elite in that game. Um, they made plays, they made key plays, they made contact catch plays. Uh, and Bailey obviously gave him a chance to do that. So really, you know, proud of that part of it. I think our defense uh, hung in there uh, and did a lot of really good things. Uh, Tanner being on the field uh, made an impact for us. It was great to have him for his first full game of the year. And uh, our third down performance on defense has been outstanding. Uh, we held a team to 0 0.1 yards a carry on 40 attempts and uh, only gave up three plays over 15 yards the entire game. One for a touchdown, which we would love to have back, obviously. But against a team like that, that's pretty good. Uh, I do love how hard our guys are playing. You know, on special teams, um, take the kickoff return out of it. It was a really good day, um, but you can't. And so that taints that performance. I thought Trent punted the ball well. Um, you know, Chris Dunn was 100%. Protection was good. Uh, our penalty performance was much better. Um, only having five in the game. We won the time of possession, had 12 explosive plays on offense, which was our season high. I thought our running backs were really physical. Had a lot of yards after contact. Um, but we got to eliminate the turnovers and, and obviously giving up six sacks is something that's not normal um, for our O-line. Something that I know they'll take to heart and obviously did in the second half. You know, I thought that Daniel Joseph and Peyton and Tanner all played really at a high level for us. Uh, and the guys found a way to finish the game and played smart, didn't let them behind them. I had to, attach themselves we call plaster with the quarterback scrambled all over the place um, so now we move on to our final home game our senior day uh, at the Carter against Georgia Tech and 12 seniors uh, kind of unique and that you don't know uh, in some cases whether they may come back or not so seniors now have an additional year um, in some cases we do know they're not and some we don't We'll have to wait and see on some of the guys. Eight of these 12 young men have already graduated and the rest are on schedule. Um, you know, guys like Louis Asus, who can't play anymore, who's been coaching all year for us, is going to be a really good coach. You know, Kerry Angeline obviously uh, has made a huge impact in our, in our team. Really proud of his development and the way he's catching the ball and blocking and become a really complete player. Dylan Ottenry, two-time captain. Um, guy that's kind of a glue guy on our football team. Uh, very caring individual, very hardworking. Emeka Amezi, um, who's created, you know, quite a name here at NC State for himself, what he's overcome and how he's playing. Chris Ingram, who uh, we've lost to injury, 
obviously, and a young man that could come back. You know, Daniel Joseph, who's made an impact here as a transfer um, and has really done a nice job learning how to fit in. You know, uh, sometimes that's hard as a transfer and just really excited about what he's brought to our front. You know, Val Martin, who's played a lot of positions on the D-line for us and plays hard. And Tyrone Riley, who we're hoping we have back for the bowl game, um, who's done a lot, <laughs> been through a lot. You know, Thomas Rocchio, who came in as a walk-on tight end, earned a scholarship, has started on our special teams and played in some of our sub packages on offense. Uh, Joe Scolthrop, who's played a ton of football um, on the O-line and, and a guy that is a really good leader for us. One of our great uh, weight room guys as well. Matt Wagner, who's a walk-on, who uh, the kids on the team absolutely love and will be missed. And Justin Witt, who's also played a lot of football. So. You know, a special group, and, and it's a day that, uh, as a coach, I take very personal for them. I, I remember senior day as a player. Um, it's one that, you know, last time playing in the stadium. Obviously, they'll get to play again in a bowl game, but in their home stadium, it's their last time out together, last time through the tunnel, series of lasts. And so we want to honor them and do our best for them uh, as they leave our program. Um, Georgia Tech. Is a very athletic football team. You know, I think they've recruited well. Uh, they're young. Uh, the kids that played for them last year that are back are better. They're developing well. Uh, they're, they're believing in what they do. You know, uh, their record doesn't really show the progress, I don't think, of their team. Uh, you turn them on Saturday night against Duke and they rushed for 325 yards and created five takeaways on defense. And there's Really good skill. I think they're creative on both sides of the football as a staff. And uh, it's going to be a good football game. It's going to be a physical football game. You can tell they're committed to running. they got a stable of backs that are really good players. I think they had a couple of injuries at tailback. I don't know what that's going to do. But uh, the guys they brought in continued to produce, and their quarterback's a very athletic guy. Uh, Sims is impressive for a freshman, you know. We got three starters back on the O line. Uh, we played against all these wideouts last year and, and didn't play well. And um, you know, defensively they do a lot. There's a ton of different stuff going on. I think their defensive end, Dominic, uh, is very impressive. Um, comes off the edge, seven and a half TFLs, four sacks. He's forced three fumbles. Uh, he's a really good football player. Their linebackers are active players. They have big safeties. They got a 6'4", 225-pound safety that they use in the box a lot. They're very rangy. Um, so, you know, Coach Collins has done a nice job. And for us, it's our last game until we figure out where we're going. And uh, our guys are excited. Um, they're a little bit tired. You got to get them back, you know. It's been, <laughs> it's been a lot of... Uh, emotional games here for us a lot of tight games a lot of one possession games we haven't had any relaxing moments really and uh so just you know calling on them to get their sleep now that we're done with school kind of letting them sleep in a little bit more and cutting back a little bit in practice so that they can rest and get them fresh and playing really fast in their last opportunity here in the regular season questions Andrew Schnicker you want to start us off please yeah Dave, Mecca and Thayer are both guys who had had have had success in, in an NC State uniform in the past and been part of receiver rooms that had a lot of success. And I'm sure the way things went for them both last year probably didn't sit well for them. Can you speak to the improvements that they've made this year and the work they put in to make that happen? Yeah, I think they uh, take a lot of pride in carrying the torch that, uh, you know, Steph Lewis and Calvin Harmon and Jacoby Myers and all those guys created an atmosphere. Um, and quite frankly, I think they'll tell you they dropped the torch last year, you know, and I think they took a lot of pride in bringing that back and play in a certain way. And Devin Carter, uh, to me, is one of those guys, too, that brings the energy to that room. Um, and so now, you know, Mecca spoke yesterday. Um, we were talking about different things that are going on, about the importance of educating the young players you know, on the things they need to understand about how to carry this forward and continue it. And so I think he's learned, you know, through this, that it's not just you, it's about what comes after you and making sure those guys pick it up. 
uh, Jonas Pope. Hey, Coach, thanks for joining us and, and, and giving us a few minutes of your time. I know you kind of you kind of touched on it in your opening statement about this unique senior day and, you know, not knowing what some guys may do in the future. And I don't want to look too far ahead, but in this unique circumstances, like what's that conversation probably going to be like for seniors, some who want to come back and some who want to move on to the next phase of their life? You know, I think uh, just got to be honest with them. In, in, in any of these situations where a guy has that, decision to make, I always kind of start with, do you think you can get better um, by coming back? Or do you think that you're as good as you're going to be in college? You know, and there's examples of that, like, you know, Ryan Finley and Bradley Chubb both came back because there was things they felt like they could get better at and improve themselves from the NFL standpoint. And they did, you know, uh, Naheem's a guy who said, coach, I can run a four, three today and I'll run a four, three next year, <laughs> you know? I'm not going to get taller. I'm not going to get heavier. I just had a thousand yards. So in his case, it made sense, you know, and I think that's how I got to look at these seniors, you know, where are they at in the education part? Can they graduate? Can they earn a second degree? Are they a developmental type player that maybe needs another year in the weight room, you know, to pr improve their stock and give themselves the best opportunity to make it in the NFL. So you know, it's not about me. It's not about trying to make next year's team better. It's about making sure they're very at peace with their decision because the last thing I want to do is talk a guy into something that he's not all in on. Uh, if they're coming back, they're coming back because it's what they want in their heart. And I'm, I'm just curious, how did this, this, this unique year, how does that affect, like, uh, scholarship numbers yeah. for, like, next year? The way it's been explained to me is if there's someone that was exhausting their eligibility that's graduated and they choose to come back, it doesn't count. It's just a plus one. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. Uh, David Thompson, go ahead. Hey, Dave. Uh, just to kind of piggyback on what Jonas said, you talked about those uh, 12 seniors. Has, have any of them given you an indication uh, whether or not they'll be back or not? Do you, do you know? Have you gotten some assurances? You know, we're not there yet. We're just talking about it right now. We want to finish the season and let them get away from it a little bit um, and probably decompress before they make any decisions. There, there's been conversations, but I've told them to focus on the season right now and that we'd get to it, you know, when the thing's over. Corey Smith, go ahead. Uh, Dave, first of all, um, is there any status update on Malik Dunlap? I noticed he wasn't on the depth chart for this week. Yeah, right now Malik's not uh, in the too deep for us. He's trying to make some decisions about what he wants to do next. So we're allowing him the opportunity to do that. And we're planning like he will not be here. Okay, and my next question for you, I don't want to look past the Georgia Tech game, but you mentioned bowl season and, and waiting that out. Uh, now that you know you are in a bowl, how unique is, is this one? Because obviously the ACC bowl games start uh, December 26th, and you might not know until a couple of days beforehand where you're going. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's very difficult, you know, to find out on the 20th that you're playing on the 26th. <laughs> Could be a challenging situation, but everything this year has been challenging, so you just got to do the best you can. Um, doesn't sound like the Bulls are going to be five-day experiences anyway, you know, so you're going to be doing a lot of your prep here. But, yeah, whoever from our league that plays in the game on the 26th is going to have a short turnaround, um, and so will their opponent, you know. So that's just how that's going to be. I think the games that are the following week, you know, um, in Florida and Charlotte give you a little bit normal opportunity to prepare how you would in a typical bowl game. Thanks, Dave. Yep. Uh, go ahead, Mark Armstrong. Uh, Dave, it's always a little bit awkward to ask you to talk about yourself, but I see a lot of talk amongst Wolfpack fans and, and outside that circle, too, that this is maybe your finest coaching job at NC State thus far. Do you feel that way yourself, or is there anything different about this year other than the obvious circumstance we're all in that, that uh, things are just clicking this year? Well, it's been a special year, you know, and I think um, our players and our assistant coaches have all done a great job. Uh, I, I think it's, you know, interesting that people feel that way. I, I think at the end of the year, I'll sit back and like I do every year and really evaluate what I did. 
um, and how much I feel like it was because of the things I did versus maybe what a player did or versus what our staff did or didn't do. Um, but I'm not one to take credit, you know, for things like that. I'm just thankful and, and feel blessed that we're in the situation we are. Um, it's been a fun year, you know, it's a special group. And obviously if we can get this next one and, and put us at eight, that would make it even better. Um, but going into the year, uh, had you told me that we were gonna deal with not only the COVID, but the number of injuries that we had um, and that we would win this many games, I'd probably laugh at you, you know? And so it says a lot uh, about this football team and about what the staff's done and, and the type of off season and team chemistry that we have. Thank you. Todd Gibson. Yeah, Dave, you guys have, have played your way into a really good bowl. I know you've still got a game left, but how important is it for this program to, to play maybe a marquee opponent in your bowl game uh, coming up on down the road? Yeah, I mean, from the player's standpoint, I think they always want to play a marquee opponent. You know, uh, to me, it's about the opportunity to, to go get better. Um, I have no control over who we play. I mean, all I want to do is try to get to a really good game, have a good time with my guys, help develop them, you know, um, get these young kids kind of a spring ball head start, um, continue to work on our packages that we want to add or tweak. Uh, and, and again, give us a chance to experiment a little bit with some players. And that's a great opportunity, you know, uh, to rep some guys have just been repping on the scout team basically all year and, and give them a head start. But I don't know. I mean, we've got to win this next game and then we'll figure out what game we're going to and who we're playing. And I was kind of surprised talking to Bailey the other night after the game that uh, that the, the players, they are actually talking about a bowl game. They're, they're excited about it. And, and you, guys aren't, you guys aren't shying away from talking about it. No, I mean, after we won our sixth, I congratulated the team on being bowl eligible again, and they went nuts. I mean, it was obviously a goal that the team had, and, and I said now the, the goal is to win out and put yourself in the conversations for the best possible bowl you can get into. And so that's a goal the guys have, and um, we've been able to do that since that game, and obviously we have one more here to finish strong and then put it in the committee's hands on where we just des deserve to go. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Yep. Go ahead, Rob McLam. Uh, Dave, you have six ACC wins. You're going for a seventh. Uh, there's a few ways of looking at that. Some would say, well, the ACC games, the total has increased to 10. But then there's also the historical perspective. And there's also what you guys, your record-wise, was were last year. I was just curious as to your thoughts on that and the depth of how meaningful that achievement would be if you do get a seventh win. Yeah, I think um... – people analyze things in so many ways and, and if we do something great there's going to be those people out there that want to diminish it <laughs> that's just how people are they want to be negative um, bottom line is we didn't choose how they set this thing up this year you know we didn't pick who we play we didn't get to pick any of it um, we lost a lot of good players we've been through a lot as a program and to go from one ACC win to wherever we end up, six times as many wins or seven times as whatever that is, right? Whether that's a record or not a record, that's pretty damn good. And, and I think that's what we got to look at is how much we improved uh, in a 12-month window where it was pretty nuts, you know, with all the things we had to deal with. So everybody involved gets credit for that. And uh, people that want to downplay what we did – just look across the country. There's a lot of teams that went the other direction that were really good teams a year ago that can't win right now. And I think that there should be some credit given to everybody in this program and to Boo, I mean, administratively, uh, what he's done and to our strength coach and their staff. I mean, there's so many people involved in this, but ultimately the players bought in and they've done a tremendous job getting us to this point where we're having these conversations. Matt Carter, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, kind of a two-parter. One, how did Kerry Angeline emerge on your radar when he got into the transfer portal, if you can remember back? And secondly, 
when it comes to the portal, is there a system that you guys have to kind of monitor that and evaluate guys who could potentially be targets for you? Yeah, so we recruited Kerry in high school, uh, and, and Coach Faulkner, um, we had offered him. He had talked to him. And so when his name came up in the portal, we, anytime there's a, a player in it, our recruiting staff notifies the position coach that this guy's in there. Do you know anything about him? And so Eddie came to me right away and said, you remember Kerry? And I was like, yeah, I do. And so we were on him immediately just because we had a prior relationship with him. We knew he was from the East Coast. He was obviously a long ways from home. And we felt like getting somebody uh, like him in our offense would be a perfect fit for what we wanted to have. And, and then it just came down to recruiting him. You know, uh, he had Boston College, he had Syracuse. So, you know, there was some East Coast competition for him. Um, and then, you know, when it comes to evaluating kids in the portal, you kind of look at your roster and uh, where there's holes, you know. So if you've had guys get injured that can't play anymore, so maybe you have a couple seniors and then you have a bunch of freshmen, well, right in the middle road right there, we need to add some age to that position group. So now you're looking in the portal for guys that fit that at that position group. Uh, I don't like bringing in an older player uh, to sit behind a freshman. You know, I don't think that's a smart thing for that kid to come here to do. So we're trying to find one that we think can be a starter or definitely be in contention to be a starter. Um, and one that's going to fit our culture. You know, we do our homework. We call everybody we can call in the kid's background and make sure he's going to be a worker and he's going to be good in the locker room. He's going to be a good teammate. He's going to be good in school. And so all those different things. Go ahead, Jonas. Coach, I wanted to ask you about um, Aline. I, I think everyone realizes how, how important he is on, it, on the defensive line, especially stopping the run. Uh, even though he may not finish a game with a whole bunch of tackles, but can you just kind of talk about his role and how important he's been in the middle uh, this season for you guys? Yeah, I mean, he demands attention in there. You know, whether they're going to double him the entire play or, or you know, zone combo up, um, if they're going to single block him, it's a tough task. And for most of the season, he's been able to disrupt blocking schemes and create run-throughs for linebackers uh, or make plays on his own, which he's done. Um, he's gotten better and better as the season's gone on. And uh, he's learned a lot about himself and his time here. I'm really proud of the way that he's come on at the end of the year. I think he's playing his best football right now, which is awesome. And uh, a tribute to him because, you know, he went through a tough game and I thought he responded well. And uh, Seen him grow as a, a leader on the team as well. Good teammate, fun guy to be around. So, you know, it's been fun working with him. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't he like a was, did he play linebacker in high school at Sanderson? He, he did. <laughs> yeah. So, what would you see him to, to think he would fit on the front? I mean, obviously he's a bigger linebacker, but yeah. Well, I mean, he's a massive guy. I mean, you knew body wise he was going to grow into a defensive lineman. He was 250 pounds. And, and each year he'd gotten bigger, you know, I mean, it didn't start that big, but he was thick, as you, as you know, in his legs. And usually the upper body is going to follow that trend. Um, but just really strong. I mean, weight room guy. And so you kind of could project where he was going that way. And, and at the time we were a four down team and just thought he was a lot like Justin Jones. That's how Justin was built in high school. Ended up being bigger than Justin, but uh, thought they were similar. And my last question about that, what, what's different for him as a, as a player when you go from that four down to three down uh, in that position? The techniques change uh, depending on what we're doing. There are times they're very similar. Um, there were times in the old defense we would play a head up two technique and he would do that. That's no different than playing a head up zero on the center. And for him, it's just disrupting. You know, we're knocking people back, playing front side or back side uh, on blocks, depending on what we're doing. And then there's times where we're just slanting and angling him uh, with our pressures or movements so that he can uh, beat the center with speed. So, you know, if you're playing a four down and you're a team that's always on the edge of linemen, then it's different. You know, you're playing on the outside shoulder of a guy the whole game. Whereas when you're playing in our defense, you're head up and you could be moving to an outside shoulder on a guy. And so for him, it, it, it's uh, a position where he gets a lot of one-on-one -on -one blocks, you know, when we get into different fronts 
where he's got opportunities to beat centers by himself. And, you know, a lot of the kids really like that. Final question of the day, uh, James Henderson, go ahead. Yeah, Dave, um, obviously your tackling's been better the last two weeks. Uh, you held Syracuse at just three yards. You can't do that without tackling well. But watching Georgia Tech over the weekend, they really try and get you out in space. Obviously, do you, you feel like that's got to be something you emphasize this week again? Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, they, they've got good skill. I mean, they have five different tailbacks that just rotate in and out, and they're all – I mean, 21 is a super special player. Um, and I think he got hurt. I don't know how bad. Um, but 27 played well against us last year for them. Uh, 22, we recruited, know him well. 28 came in the game against Duke and, and housed two uh, runs. And and their skill at slot uh, to an 88 are really fast. So they've got the ability to make plays on you and be explosive offensively. So when you're talking about playing well on defense, it starts with your leverage and then it goes to your tackling and then it talks, you're talking about making plays on the ball. So it's going to be a critical aspect for us and we just need to play fast, you know, and I think we've done that the last two games on defense. We've really flown around and uh, having Tanner back obviously helps. I mean, he tackled really well uh, in the game Saturday and Peyton, I think that was his best tackling game. He didn't miss a tackle, uh, whereas two weeks ago he had five missed tackles. So it's good to see him improve that way. And are they a similar match thematically to, to Liberty? Are they similar in personnel wise, how they use their guys? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, it's not the exact same system, but formations are similar. Obviously, having the quarterback that can run, uh, some of their run game is, is similar. Um, but I think it's a good comparison.